Good evening. Despite the lockdown lifting, a survey has shown that more than half of small businesses in the hospitality trade believe they won't reopen. Many of those who struggled through the enforced closure admit they're having to use their savings to survive. Independent traders on 1 Birmingham High Street are worried the long-term impact of social distancing will deliver a body blow to their chances of carrying on. We're joined now by our business correspondent, Peter Plisner. And Peter, this must be something many high streets across the country are feeling. Certainly is, Nick. Uh, these figures centre on businesses like <coughs> restaurants and caterers, uh, but I have to say it affects all small businesses in a pretty huge way. Tonight we're in a small brewery in Sturchley in South Birmingham. It's an area that's gained national recognition as uh, one of the trendiest neighbourhoods in the UK with a growing number of cafes, bars and uh, shops. But Louise Briley has been looking at how coronavirus has affected the high street here. Before lockdown, Sturchley High Street in Birmingham was thriving. It was very, very good. Six days a week, and we were completely booked out every single night. Independent businesses had transformed the street. We were named in the top 20 bars. We went online to the Telegraph, a top 20 in the world. But these small traders now face an uncertain future. I am concerned now more than I ever was before. It's terrifying to see the bank balance dropping down. Jacob and Katie opened their bar five months before lockdown. We thought about this business for like two years before we opened. We were open, we were busy, everything was just lovely. So as soon as we were closed, we were sitting at home. It's stressful, you get very anxious. Within a month of closing, they began a cocktail delivery service. And it's actually been really kind of lovely delivering to our locals because we just get to see them and have a chat at their front door. But we probably do about a quarter of what we would have done if the bar was open as normal. They're now looking at ways to open the bar safely in August. At the start of lockdown, Jordan moved her plant shop online. The only door into people's houses was through online, so we had to move everything on there very quickly. While she's been selling out of stock, financially it's been tough. All of our costs have gone up astronomically and our prices, we've dropped them actually to compete in the online marketplace. Um, so we're working very hard just to keep afloat. But the success of it is obviously, I've got all of my team still in work and I do think as well, we help spread and lift so many people up through this time. She's now launched a click and collect service, but has no plans to open the shop. I've had to reorganise the shop completely now to be a processing plant. So I'm not sure how we can invite people into the store. And I do think that maybe Click and Collect could be the only way that we can keep serving our customers. Ming Nam opened his 40 seat restaurant last July. Eight months later, it was shut and all 13 staff furloughed. The closing down the, the business was uh, obviously a bit scary because we didn't know how we were going to reopen it. He had a website built and began a collection service in June. It did really, really well and we're going to continue it. Basically, people can have chill food to take home, uh, reheat at home with uh, instructions from us. Due to the size of the restaurant, he's decided to keep it closed for the rest of the year. To open up again at the moment, I reckon we'll probably fit 10 people in following all the rules and guidelines. So therefore, we just, at the moment, we're just going to keep uh, doing takeout for now. It could take years for this high street to recover, but these businesses are determined to keep going. Louise Briley, BBC Midlands Today, Sturchley. And Peter, it might have been trendy there, but clearly thanks to COVID-19, some businesses are having to adapt very quickly, aren't they? Well, they certainly are here. Uh, we're in the tap room or bar here at uh, the brewery. I'm joined by the owner, uh, Paul Harwood. Paul, first tell me this buzzword pivoting, where you change the business to, I suppose, survive and make money. How have you pivoted? Uh, well, before lockdown, we were doing approximately 30% of our beer um, through can sales. Um, and 100% of our sales went to uh, trade customers. Um, so when the changes happened and bars and restaurants closed overnight, um, we found ourselves without any customers to sell to um, and with product that we thought was going to waste. And has the lockdown been tough for you though? Lockdown has been tough, it's been a lot of hard work. We've started canning all of our production instead of splitting it between 
uh, can, cask and mm-hmm. keg and delivering direct to homes across Birmingham um, for free of charge for those customers. And of course, you're looking forward to reopening the bar this weekend. Yeah, really looking forward to opening the bar this weekend. Um, we're really excited to see our customers who have missed um, and be able to provide people with the taste of fresh draft beer as well. Also with me is Paul uh, Mark Laurie. You're from the uh, National Caterers Association. Tell me, your survey says that uh, up to half of businesses thought they would close as a result of the lockdown. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's been a real struggle for a lot of businesses. A lot of them have missed out on hospitality grants. Uh, a lot of them have been very unsure about where to, how to, to, to overcome this problem. And there's lots of issues around rent and tax uh, that are weighing heavy on people's minds. So it's, it's been a real struggle. And I think that yeah, the reopening is going to be another struggle again. But have a lot of been able to pivot, as we've heard from, uh, from Paul already? There's been some incredible stories. We've had about a third of our customers have pivoted. That's about 2,000 businesses have pivoted in a couple of weeks. And some of them are doing incredibly well. Some of them are even not going to go back to what they were doing before because they've been so successful at it. But um, it's, it's been a, a real challenge for a lot of businesses. And some of them have done extremely well. Um, but the, the pivot has been difficult and support hasn't always been there in a timely way to, to help them. And that clearly means a lot have been using their own savings to keep businesses afloat. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of small businesses were uh, directors, so they were self-employed, so uh, they wouldn't have got any money in, in that kind of support. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people, uh, most of our customers didn't get any hospitality grants, so they're working through their savings as we speak. So briefly, what, what do you think the government should do? Because clearly there needs to be more support specifically for the hospitality industry, a lot of people say. Absolutely. I think a commitment to the hospitality industry. They, they are trying, uh, they are working towards it, and hopefully the Chancellor tomorrow will give us some good news. But we absolutely need long-term support for the hospitality industry. We need VAT support, uh, we need furlough support, and we, we just and rent support if, if possible. Mark and Paul, many thanks. Well, a lot of businesses are now reopened, but there are still fears about that second